Joining Andrew Clennell and me this afternoon is Michael Kroger, former Victorian Liberal Party president, and live from Allianz Stadium, the new chair of the Australian Professional Football Leagues, our friend Stephen <laughs> Conroy. Uh, Stephen uh, there, as we can see, wearing the, the football jersey too. And congratulations on the new role. I look forward to talking to you about that another day. Today, another we'll be talking day. about Daniel Andrews, as we have many times over the years. Stephen, how will he be remembered in terms of his political legacy? Well, I think he brought Labor out of opposition. Uh, and uh, he has to be admired for that. He won you know, three elections. And he won them comfortably. And he didn't just, you know, win them with decreasing majorities, as is usually the case. He won with increasing majorities. 12 months ago, or less than 12 months ago, he actually won with an increased majority of the party after eight years in government. That's extraordinary. So he has a Labor legendary legacy. The COVID lockdowns, controversial, but the majority of Australians are back to Daniel Andrews' leadership. They're not the majority of Victorians. They're back to his leadership. So that's uh, an important uh, thing to remember. You know, you can have people who want to criticise him, but when it came to the ballot box, they backed him in. Yeah, they certainly did. And Michael Kroger, you, you spoke to us earlier in the program in our coverage, our rolling coverage of this big news out of Melbourne, and, and you did recognise this politician's capacity as a, a political communicator and a politician. I know you've got his, the problems with him, but Mm. The success is there on the scoreboard. Look, there's no doubt... Um, well, there's no point arguing with the scoreboard, particularly if it's re reflecting on past results. Um, Andrews was a brilliant communicator. Uh, he was able to convince people that what he was doing was right. And he never admitted doubt or fault, or extremely rarely, even then only in a begrudging way that meant, wink, wink, I'm not really apologising... Uh, he didn't leave people in any doubt that he thought what he was doing was right. And, you know, strong leadership throughout not Victorian politics but world politics, strong leadership is one of the main reasons people win elections. There are other reasons, but that's one of them. But, Kieran, as I said, I can't help but think that, you know, that's one legacy at a political level. But when he became Premier, state debt was $20 billion. Um, He leaves office with state debt of over $170 billion. You give me $150 billion, uh, I'll win three elections in a row too. Huh. Stephen Conroy, you're the one who knows uh, m most of us in terms of what's going on inside the Victorian Labor Party. Is Ben Carroll challenging this succession in order to firm up the deputy position for the right of the Labor Party? And will uh, essentially the, the succession of Jacinda Allen, as Daniel Andrews wants, will that happen? Will she be the next Premier? So it's a great fault of all politicians is to try and dictate who is going to replace them, whether it's Stephen Conroy or Daniel Andrews. Uh, having said that, I think Jacinda Allen uh, is the favourite. I think there are a number of people who'd be interested in running, but I think at this stage she is the favourite. Uh, in terms of the deputy, that's a... That's still under discussion. I think there's meetings happening all over uh, Parliament House in Victoria right now. Uh, there's a variety of things. I mean, one of the key parts here is, is Tim Pallas staying as Treasurer. I hope so. I understand that's the signals that I'm, I'm picking up. Uh, so I'd be, I'd be hoping that Tim will be staying. Uh, ben uh, would be certainly consider himself a potential candidate, as would others, uh, I think, Gabrielle Williams is a name that you haven't got up there on your screen at the moment. I think you shouldn't discount her uh, as a possible deputy. Uh, but at this stage, it is still a lot of people in shock, still discussions taking place. But certainly, I think Ben is interested. I think Gabrielle Williams is interested. Some of those other people we've had on the screen there are interested. I think it's too early to make a call on the deputy's position. So would you, would you say, though, the right will get the deputy position? Well, not me. Uh, the tradition is that uh, the right and left have a balance between both chambers. And at the moment, there's two right-wingers in the upper house, so the left may make an argument that there should be two left-wingers in the uh, lower house. Those are the sort of discussions that are taking place at the moment, uh, and it's just a fraction too early to, uh, to be able to be definitive on that. But discussions, you know, they are definitely underway. People aren't returning my calls. So that means they're in meetings, uh, having, uh, having serious discussions. 
whoever takes over, Stephen, it is a massive ask, isn't it, given the profile, given the authority, the presence of the outgoing Premier? Well, there's no question. Dan dominated the entire political scene. Dan did most of the press conferences. Dan, uh, his, his mastery of the media was, was just extraordinary. His mastery of social media. So he casts a huge shadow over all other candidates, including Jacinto. I mean, the real challenge for whoever wins the leadership, if it's Jacinto, is to create her own image out of that Dan Andrews shadow. I mean, he has he's left an extraordinary... Uh, political profile in Victoria. He's the dominant political figure. Uh, and the Labor Party will be grateful to Dan for his leadership over a long period of time. He's not everyone's cup of tea. But, geez, you know, in terms of, uh, of impact, you cannot go past him. Well, that's true. And, and you were, were with us on the desk when we covered the election, a thumping win, as was Andrew yep. Clennell last November for... For Daniel Andrews' victory, uh, Andrew Clennell, and and you like like um, Stephen and and, and uh, Michael have seen a lot in state politics. This individual, this outgoing premier, is among the most successful, certainly, and most uh, influential, controversial. I'd have to say as well, figures that I've covered in the uh, political uh, reporting that I've done. Dan Andrews is an animal. I mean, he's like, he's more... The funny thing about it, Kieran, is he's more Tony Abbott or Peter Dutton than he is Anthony Albanese, who, of course, Albanese's a secret animal, but he puts across the avuncular uh, persona, if you like, and that's been beneficial to him. Morrison tried the same, but it didn't end up working. But in terms of sort of hard politician persona, uh, uh, you know, Andrews is, is just... Well, he gets to play himself. It's the old Michael J. Fox trick, isn't it? But, I mean, one of the things that fascinates me about today, and I'm going to ask Stephen about this in a minute, uh, well, uh, after I throw to this grab, in fact, is this is really history repeating itself. Steve Brax did exactly the same thing, a very shallow period after an election. Here was Steve Brax, a former Victorian Premier, talking to Kieran just earlier. It actually rings true to me. Um, I left after my third term. Well, I just won a third term election. Daniel Andrews has done the same thing. And I can sort of get it. I understand it because um, really the, the job wears you down. And um, after two terms into your third, you know that if you're going on, um, the third term is going to be very difficult. Uh, to be fair, I probably said the same thing, um, Kieran, in 2006 in the election. I, and it was my intent at that time to serve a full term. And I'm sure it was Daniel Andrews' intent when he won the last election to serve a full term. OK. Stephen Conroy, isn't what happened here treating the electorate with contempt? I mean... Look, not at all. The problem in today's media is you demand instant gratification. You're either going to stay for the entire four years or you should go immediately. Daniel Andrews has earned the right to choose. Well, how about you don't run? Stephen, well, I, how about it, you don't run, mate? No, I, I, don't hey? think that, I don't think that you can equate a decision to run beforehand and then I think, I think it's time. I, I, I would agree with his time. I think the people of Victoria were starting to tire. I think Daniel Andrews wanted to move on to a new challenge. And I think that he earned the right to be able to retire under his own choice. So I don't accept... Let, your let me put this to you. OK, let me put this to you. Daniel Andrews always... Perhaps this is the case. Daniel Andrews always wanted to go mid-term, but he's decided to go earlier than that. Do you think that's potentially the case? Because surely he didn't run to an election saying, I'm going to go after 10 months... That would really be look, taking the mickey or some other word. No, no. Look, I think that everyone in the Labor Party expected he would not serve the full term. So then you've got to start thinking about, well, what's the best thing for the Labor Party? And what Dan, Daniel Andrews has decided is it's best for me to clear the space for my successor to have a good three years. We've got a lot of economic challenges. We've got a lot of incredible projects going on. I need to be out of that equation to give the Labor Party and my successor the best possible chance to win the next election in 2026. So I think Daniel has continued 
to be with this action, a servant ultimately of the Labor Party. I'm wanting to see whoever, most likely Jacinta, but whoever succeed in 2026 and continue the programs going forward. So I think we might have gone six months earlier than most people thought. Uh, I always believed it was between 12 months and 18 months. He's gone a few months earlier than that. There you go. But what he's done is what he's done is he's cleared the way to give his successor and the Labor Party the best chance at the next election. And he deserves credit. Well, cleared the way? He's, he's, he's cleared the way so much that they've got so much time people might get tired of them. But I've got to say, Michael Kroger, <laughs> I've, heard you, I've, I've heard you bag Jim Chalmers, uh, Jim Chalmers every week for months. Uh, the only person you appear to dislike more is Dan Andrews. And I've got to say that watching him win election after election must be like an AFL fan of another club, seeing Hawthorne win premiership after premiership and just curse at every grand final day. That's what it's been like for you, isn't it? Well, well, that's absolutely right. But uh, the job of a political leader is to is to win elections, and Andrews was very, very good at that, despite the economic mess and chaos he's, he leaves behind him. Um, but just to add to what Stephen has said, um, uh, you, 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 no, this is what leaders do. Of course, they don't say I'm retiring after the election. Vote for me, but I'm retiring after the election. I mean, I don't criticise Andrews at all for having changed his mind, nor Steve Brax, nor any political leader. You go to the election with the intention of winning that election and probably staying, and for whatever reason, you decide to go. Now, Andrews is smart enough, by the way, mate, to realise that fourth terms are hard to win. And he's done yeah. three. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I just hope, you know, two things are certain in life. One is that Jacinta Allen will be elected tomorrow. That's over. And secondly, that Palaszczuk will not be mm. Premier after the next Queensland state election because she's going for a fourth Whoa. term and she's not, she's not able Whoa. to win a fourth term. So I think, Dan, when he, before, he gets, before he gets to the golf course, I think he needs to give her a ring and say, listen, it, it's been a good ride, but it's <laughs> over. <laughs> Let me get um, let me get your final okay, thoughts, we'll Stephen, before that. you go. And Michael, let's get your final thoughts, Stephen Conroy. First to you, just quickly. I've got Darren Chester lined up. He's going to have a chat to us shortly as well. But Stephen, how, your final thoughts on the the legacy of Daniel Andrews? Yeah. Look, I think the the big build. You know, all of the capital work that were needed. You know, the the state needed its infrastructure rebuilt uh, for the next ten and twenty years. So I think the ultimate legacy. Uh, is that he has positioned Victoria to have world-class infrastructure going forward, and that is to his credit. Michael Kroger? A very, very good political operator, one of the best we've seen, um, brilliant at convincing people of the worthiness of his position and the strength of his position, but a man who leaves behind him a shocking economic uh, legacy, uh, which we'll be paying for for generations to come, unfortunately, mate. Michael Kroger, Stephen Conroy, gentlemen, great to have you on this big day in Australian politics. Thank you, as always, gentlemen.